In all their affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bore them and carried them all the days of old. You may be seated. From the first clause of the ninth verse, in all their afflictions, he was afflicted. We would like to take from the subject of that text, in all our afflictions, in all our afflictions. Christianity is a rare religion in today's thinking. Today in which we are filled with so much of uh, what we think and what we feel and how we believe God should make us feel. In a soft rebellion against what seems to be the order of the day. The Christian church, some of us have become very lax in what really Christianity is. It's not a religion to make one feel good or cause one to feel comfort. Or, but it is a religion that is based around the cross. It is the cross that gives us hope. However, it is also the cross that shows us that we must also go through. It is impossible for us to view biblical Christianity without viewing the fact that you and I must carry our own cross. It is impossible for us to enjoy the favor of God without enduring the fire of God. You and I, when we were saved, God put us on what is referred to as the threshing floor. You remember when John the Baptist was baptizing in the river of Jordan, he said, I indeed baptized with water, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And with fire. Amen. Now some have made the fire of God synonymous with our excitement. Some have made the fire of God synonymous with our shouting, our jumping, our running. But I would like to lift to you and bring to your attention that the fire of God has more to do with the trials tribulations, tests, and our text, the afflictions that the child of God must endure in order for us to make the rapture. We're not going to get to heaven without trouble. We're not going to get to glory without a cross. I'd like to admit to you as well that uh, Christianity without suffering is a cheap Christianity. A gospel without the cross is a weak gospel. A lifestyle of the child of God without suffering is a stagnant lifestyle. It's one without growth. It's one without development. Because if we are to grow and develop in our Christian walk, we must face these trials. Peter said, now I, I suggest that if anyone, when they first get saved, I suggest they read the book of St. John to know who Jesus is. And read the book of Acts. 
to know why we do what we do at our churches. And you read the book of 1 Peter, become acquainted with sufferings. Peter said, if you suffer as a Christian, you're not to think things are strange. You're not to think that you're going through just to be going through. But there's a purpose behind these afflictions that we face each and every day. What should be noticed that whether you're saved or not, you're going to go through. Whether you're living holy or not, you're going to go through. But the difference about the child of God going through and the world is that in all of our afflictions, he is afflicted with us. We're not going through the trial by ourselves. We're not going through the fire by ourselves. Right along with us is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Note then when you are placed in the baptism of fire, Holy Ghost fire, you are placed in there as a ugly looking rock. You know anything about gold, you know what I'm talking about. That goldsmith, when he sees the gold, it, it doesn't look like the shiny diamond or the shiny ring that's on your finger right now. now that gold is an ugly shaped looking rock. But the goldsmith sees something in that rock that if it is put through what it needs to be put through, and if it endures what it needs to endure, it can come out looking something better. Goldsmith sees that rock and he takes it and he puts it in a kettle. What he does, he allows the heat to be turned up seven times hotter. He melts that rock and that liquid and liquefies and he gets a tool gets on all the draws, which is the trash that comes to the top of the kettle. He checks it every now and then to see if it's ready. What is he looking for? He's looking for a reflection of himself. He checks in that kettle to see if that gold is ready. If not, he gets the tool and gets some more of that trash. So, because you and I, when we come into the church, we had our sins washed away, but there are some still some issues that God has to work out of us in order for us to be pure gold. So he gets that tool and he gets the dross. And if it's not according to what he wants, he turns the fire higher. Not to destroy the gold, but to purify the gold. You've been crying about your test and how hard it is in your trial. God's not trying to kill you. He's trying to purify you. He's trying to make you gold. Remember Job said, when he had tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. I know these are not the messages that, that we come to church to hear. These are not the sermons that are on the top of the sermon list for the preacher either. But sometimes you just got to do what the Lord says. And I've been set on assignment to remind you that the text that you're in now is not to destroy you, but to make you better and make you stronger. Jesus Christ did not put us in the fire to evaporate us, but he's trying to make us the jewels that he spoke about in Zechariah. He says, they shall be mine when I make up my jewels. If you're going to be in God's jury box, if you're going to be in the rapture of the church, 
you must go through this fire. Then he turns it up and looks at it. And it is a perfect reflection of himself. But that's not the end of the process. That's a cooling process that the gold must go through. He puts it up on a shelf. You've been wondering why haven't my ministry taken off? Why, why can't I do what this one is doing and do what that one is doing? Maybe you're on the shelf to be cooled off. And finally, he can take that gold off the shelf and display it to the world and show them what he's able to do with little of nothing. In our text, we find Isaiah as he is looking over the afflictions of Israel. He's saying that in their afflictions, God was with them. God was with them when they were in Egypt, when the taskmasters had whipped their backs. When the affliction got so hard, that the cry of the Hebrews went up to God and he heard their cry. Amen. But what happened? The more their oppressors oppressed them and the more affliction they put on them, the scripture says they grew. In other words, child of God, what we're going through now, the pressure that we're feeling is only going to grow us, mature us, take us to the next level, and sustain us while we're here on the earth. Child of God, don't withdraw from these afflictions. Don't withdraw from these trials. Don't say, why me? Say, why not me? Amen. If Jesus Christ could bear his cross, being our perfect example, how much more can you bear your cross? Amen. Having the living God on the inside of you. Amen. Jesus Christ was our perfect example. He bore his cross. Amen. He despised it, but he took it. And so this affliction grew them. It stretched Israel. It grew them to the capacity that God would have them to be. Without this oppression, without this affliction, there were certain things that they would have never learned in freedom. There were certain things that they would have never appreciated without these tests. And without these storms, you know, there are some times that you can just shout and feel the presence of God even more while you're going through the trial than it was when you were living stop free. When things were going good for you, sometimes you just sat in church with your legs crossed and your arms folded. But when you go through the trials of life, and you see how God has brought you from death doors unto now. You've got a reason to open up your mouth and give God the praise that he deserves. Or it afflicted them. The more they grew. He was with them in the trial. He was with them when Rachel was crying for her children. In that evil Pharaoh declared to destroy and to kill all of the male children two years old and under, God was with them. He was with them through oppression. He was with them through death. And let me tell you, child of God, most of the issues that we're facing in our local church is unprocessed grief unprocessed grief because we believe that because we speak with tongues we don't need a therapist yes. we believe that because we suck a mazai and run around the church we don't need nobody to talk to but I declare if you would give God everything 
and allow some of these Holy Ghost filled psychologists to talk to you, God will help your mind process some of the unprocessed grief. We're going through these issues, child of God, and we're feeling like we're overwhelmed because we have not opened up to anyone and we have not talked the problem out. Just look at somebody and say, talk it out. Talk it out. Don't fuss it out. Don't, don't complain it out. But talk it out. You, you ain't even talked to Jesus yet. The song said, have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your problems. He'll hear your faintest cry and answer you by and by. You ain't even took time and got on your knees and got on your face and said, Lord, this is the issue. This is the problem. This is what I need help in. We're too proud to even tell God our deepest issues. And because of this, we're stuck in the rut that we're in, in our local churches. Well, if we would come boldly before God and say, Lord, I need help with my attitude. Lord, I need help with my addiction. Lord, I need help. Oh, God, I need you to touch me in this area and heal me in that area and be honest and open before God. That's all he's waiting on. He's waiting on you and I to be honest and open before him. Let the church have hallelujah. So he was with them, hallelujah, through their afflictions, with them through their slavery and oppression, with them through death, and on and on in the Old Testament, we find that God was with Israel, whether he was with them as a nation or with a group of individuals, he was with them in their grief and in their infirmities. Amen. You know how the three Hebrew boys, they were in a land, amen, a land of bondage in Babylon. There, could, they could not worship their God freely. In Babylon, they could not praise God like they wanted to. In Babylon, they were bound and captive. But God allowed, allowed them to go through the fiery furnace. There's also a furnace called the furnace of affliction in your Bible. As they were in the fiery furnace, we are in our fires or our furnaces of affliction. And in the fiery furnace, they thought they threw in three helpless boys. But what they didn't know is that the God that was with their people in Egypt was with each and every one of them in their personal afflictions as well. When they went into the fiery furnace, they were where they were met by the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord is that theophany. It is God in human form. God in angelic form in the fiery furnace. So the next day when amen, the king Nebuchadnezzar woke up, he said, Oh, Daniel, oh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he was hoping for them to be dead because they threw him in and the one that threw them in, he was consumed at the door. But little did they know that the God that was with their fathers in their afflictions was with them too. He looked over and said, did not we throw in three? But now I see four men loose walking in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And I want you to know when they came out the furnace, they didn't smell like smoke. Their hair was not singed. Their clothes were not burned. It was like they never went in. God is going to show, show off his people in this last day. The devil thought he threw you in to destroy you. But greater is he that's within us than he that's in the world. Can the church shout hallelujah? Oh yes, greater is he 
while they were in. He said, I thought I threw in three, but I see a fourth one. And the form of the form is like the Son of God. The Son of God didn't show up unto Matthew, but he showed up early for his people. And I want you to know God's going to show up early for his people. God's going to show. He's scheduled to show up years from now. But while you're in your test, God's going to show up. He's going to show up at your home. He's going to show up in your schools. He's going to show up at your job. Right in the nick of time. When the fire is at its highest. God's going to show up and deliver his people. Come the church shout out of the glory of the high. Shout hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. And so now, rather than just not only is he was he with Israel, but the great God from glory became a man, came down through forty-two generations, so that he could be with us. He was with Israel because he made a covenant with him. But thank God, he made a covenant with us. It's called the new covenant in his blood. He said, "This is my blood, which is shed for many, for the remission of." your sins and because we are recipients of the baptism in his name because we are recipients of the tongue talking holy ghost we are heirs and joint heirs with Christ and the covenant of all we have a new covenant now amen we are not the same and because of this he is with us in our trials and in our deliverance we don't have to we don't have to wonder when is God going to show up for us? Because he's already declared in his word. In your infirmities, he's already there. And he will not let you go through by yourself. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. But I will come to you. He said, there's another comforter coming. Called the Holy Ghost. Is there anybody in the building that has the baptism of the Holy Ghost? That's the one that came alongside you and helped you in your infirmities. That's the one that came on the inside of you to help you go through. That's the one that came on the inside of you to help you fight your battles. You're not fighting this battle by yourself. As a matter of fact, this battle is not yours. But it belongs to the Lord. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You don't have to fight in this battle. I heard God tell you, hush of that time. He said, This ain't your fight because I'm with you in your afflictions. When the devil came at you, he was really coming at me. When the devil to kill you. He was really coming to kill me. When the devil came to threaten you, he was really coming to threaten me. He didn't know that you had God on your side. He didn't know that you had a fighter on your side. He didn't know that you had the battle axe on your side. He didn't know that you had the comforter on your side. He didn't know that you had the way, the truth, and the life on your side. He didn't know he had the Alpha and the Omega on your side. And I come to tell you, he's Emmanuel. He's God with us. He's not God across the street from us, but he's God with us. And he's going to fight our battles. Don't because I come to tell you, by this time the sun be hot. By tomorrow, I just believe that God's gonna work out some issues you brought to Him. You brought to Him in prayer. You've been talking to Him all week, but now the Lord is saying, because you went through, because you went through with joy. 
Because you didn't let the devil steal your joy. He's gonna work out every problem. He's gonna heal everywhere you hurt. He's gonna turn your situation around. Can the church are yeah? Yes, Lord. We're not serving a defeated God, but we're serving a God of victory. Thanks be the God which given us the victory to our Lord Jesus Christ. I come to tell you, you won't die in your affliction. You won't die in your test. You won't die in your trouble. But deliverance is your portion. Deliverance is your portion. You're gonna come out with the victory. You're gonna come out with power. You're gonna come out with joy. You're gonna come out with peace. You're gonna come out with victory. This battle is not yours. Set yourself up. Hold on. Hang on. Deliverance is on the way. Shout glory. Finish. I'm a quick. Let me tell you, child of God, the affliction that you're going through. Yes, we go through trials. Yes, we go through. But don't you go through with your head now. Go through with joy. Go through shouting. Go through rejoicing. You got to cry, cry, and shout. Hallelujah. Amen. Cry and pain. Cry and run. Cry and keep your victory. Enemy who wants to destroy your joy. Who wants to sip away your joy. Who wants you to come to church and look. Like the Spirit Jones said, the church of the first refrigerator. I want you to come and look. And just nod your head every now and then. And think about your trouble. And you ought to tell the devil not to get here. Hey. Hey. Not from the church. I'm leaving my troubles at the door. Matter of fact, leave my troubles at the altar. And let God have the Praise the Lord. Hezekiah. Come here, Hezekiah. You've got a letter. Of his army is going to destroy you. They're coming to destroy you, Hezekiah. What are you going to do? Go to the altar and lay out this letter before the Lord. Come this ain't my mail. No way. This is God's. He's afflicted with us. So, Lord, they're coming to destroy not just me, they're coming to destroy us. They said they want to take you over. They said they want to repossess your car. They said they want to foreclose on your house. They said they want to fire you from your child. This is your mail. You do something about it. And watch how God works. Stop taking things so personal. It's not for you, it's for God. Cast your cares on Him. Because He cares for you. He's the only one that can bear your problems and give you an answer, give you a solution. All their afflictions, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. Salvation off deliverance. When we're afflicted, we feel like there's no hope for us. We feel like we're going to go through this cycle of death, cycle of debt, cycle of depression, and cycle of oppression. But the angel of his presence is there. To deliver you or to save you. If you want to be saved or delivered, the angel of his presence is there. The angel of his presence, that theophany of God, it is, it is God in angel form. It is God manifesting so you can see him. It is God showing up in your situation. 
It's God revealing himself in your property. God revealing himself at your job, at your house. It's God working things out. It's God getting his hands dirty with you. Working out the problem. It's God telling you to sit down and relax. I'll take it from here. God is saying, I'll be a pillar of fire by night. Not just to lead your way, but to make you warm in that desert. Because God said, I'll be a pillar of cloud by day. Not just to lead the way, but to block the sun in the desert for you so it won't scorch you. It's God making provision for the saints. Working things out. God behind the scenes moving things around for you. While you worship here, he's working somewhere. Fixing things for you. While you give him your all, he's fixing your depression. He's, he's going to meet your depression with joy. Hallelujah. Don't, don't, don't be ashamed. Say, Lord, I'm dealing. He knows what you're dealing with already. But don't be ashamed to come to him and say, Lord, I'm dealing with depression. I'm dealing with oppression. I need some help. I need the angel of your presence. I need you to come in the midst of my trial and work things out for me. The angel of his presence saved them in his love and his pity. He redeemed them. He loves us so much that he will redeem. He'll bring us back. He'll pay for us. He'll pay for us back. That's how much he loves us. He redeems us. He redeems us. He brings us back to himself. And he bore them. We don't have to walk. We don't have to walk. We get weary. He can bear us up. He can bear us up when he goes away. Take us. When the terrain is too rocky for us to walk in, he can bear us up. You ever felt that before? You ever felt like you were sailing through life for a moment? That's God bearing you up. In the midst of your hardest test, in the midst of your hardest trial, I believe we told you before, a father passed, and after that, a deacon passed, and after that, my sister passed, right, right back. And as a matter of fact, the deacon and my sister passed in the same week. The deacon passed that early that week, and I was on the phone with my sister telling her that Deacon Peterson, he passed away. And she said, oh man, I'm sorry to hear that. She was praying for him, and the next day she passed. And so we we had a graveside service for the deacon, and had her service the next week, and we were going through it, and we're still going through it. But the angel of his presence, he's burying us up. Glory to God! And I'm not going to lie to you, I've experienced depression. I wasn't this big, but when I when I uh, went through. Some people don't eat when they go through, and some people do eat when they go through. And I eat, I was eating snacks and candy, because I couldn't cry. I was the pillar of the family, I couldn't cry. I couldn't break down in front of my mom, in front of my brother, in front of my wife, in front of the church, and be the strong one. And that comes with consequences, because grief is going to get you one way or another. But anyway, you have to be the strong one. You can, couldn't just break down. You had to break down in sessions. I had to get away. I'm a truck driver, too. So when I'm in my trucks, I, I can break down there because they go by there with me and Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So while you're around the family, you have to be the strong one there. And so I ate. I ate. I experienced depression. Didn't talk to anyone. But the Lord, he helped me. The Lord helped me was my pastor, Bishop Bender. The Lord helped me. The Lord brought me out of that room, out of that horrible pit that I was in. And I can testify and tell you, depression is real, but the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's how I'm going to Without the joy of the Lord, could have, could have committed suicide. Without the joy of the Lord, I could have turned in my resignation in Birmingham and said, I don't want to pass there anymore. I'm tired of it. Father Pat, who was one of the biggest givers in the church. My sister was a faithful time. 
Deacon Peterson faithful in what he does. Finances still. And we're still trying to work things out with the finances, but God has been good to us. God has been faithful to us. So we're not preaching something that we're not going through ourselves. In our affliction, he's afflicted with us. He feels our pain. Hallelujah. We have a high priest that can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. I don't know what you go through. You don't know what I go through. But there is a high priest whose name is Jesus Christ who is touched by our infirmities. And not only is he touched by our infirmities, he has the power to touch us back and to heal us. Hallelujah to God. There's healing flowing through this sanctuary. Lift your hands and say, Lord, heal me. Lord, I'm going to die and say, I told you. Woo, say, let me hear that time. Oh, in the name of Jesus, let healing be our portion, Lord. Heal our hearts. Woo, say, heal our emotions, God. Woo, glory to God. Heal our minds. I Heal our feelings, God. Hallelujah. Heal our bodies. Heal into hell before you. Woo, glory to God. Healing, you want to touch from the Lord. Come, come to the altar. Come. 